my name is Mary Leko Sherry, and I am a studio artist. Welcome to my art studio. I'm going to first give you a little tour of my workspace because it plays into what I have to tell you about and tips I have to give you. This is my studio space in my house. It also is our workout room. It's our homeschool room. It's our music room. So I am a painter and an illustrator. I like to dabble both in the fine art world and the illustration world, which they still make a distinction over. For illustration, I like to work in watercolor and I really prefer oil um, for my fine artwork. Currently, as you can see behind me, I am working on a collection called the Sea Bather Collection. It's been two years since I've been passionate about this. Primarily, it's discovering vintage photos and painting them in color and bringing something that might have just been a snapshot or even a magazine picture. It gives it new life. It showcases it. And it's been a really exciting work to, to do. One day, I hope to get to illustrating children's books. That has been a longtime dream of mine. And I will talk more later about where I am in my art journey. I did go to school for being an artist. I got a degree in painting, drawing, and printmaking. Um, it was a liberal arts degree, so I did take a lot of other courses as well. Typical day for me, hmm, I do have four kids and I'm a mom. And I am not naturally gifted in routine. I am trying to do better, especially as school is out right now and it's summer. Um, I'm trying to focus on painting in the morning when I first get up, working on and off with many interruptions for a few hours and then maybe even touching on it again in the afternoon. By nature, I am a night owl and it would be nice to work long afternoon hours, maybe even into the evening. Right now, it just seems to fit my schedule best to try to get it done in the morning, get it under my belt before other things can easily distract me. I decided to go into my field. I, I feel like I could have lived nine lives with nine different professions. I have many different interests. But art has always been different for me in that I don't think I could ever not do it. And I know everyone's field that they choose to go into doesn't have to be that degree of passion or that degree of where they feel it's ingrained in who they are. Um, I actually really love that I have this passion. I think it lends a lot to my life. It fits in with my other passion of being a mom. and. Um, it's something I've just always done. All kids draw, a lot of kids stop drawing, and I never stopped. I did, in high school, I got to attend an art camp, and I went for three or four summers. It was a really special opportunity because it was at a university, and I had some of the same professors that I would have later when I went back and got my degree. The cool thing was is they didn't do crafty kind of art. They taught us real art. And I would say, no matter what your age is, if art is your passion, pursue it seriously in that buy the best supplies you can, look up the YouTube videos or get the books out of the library that teach you proper technique. It is okay to have fun in art. Of course, it is a creative expression, but do focus on excellence and good resources and especially good supplies. Good supplies do make a difference. In college, I did participate in a lot of other things and I have mixed feelings about that. College is a wonderful, very unique time in your life that won't come again and is just a really special time to explore all the passions you have. That said, I did participate in sports. I participated heavily in my literary society, um, just being very social and 
even I did a Spanish play. And I think looking back, I wouldn't say that I would undo all those things. But what I didn't do is spend enough focused time working on my major and getting in the studio. And I think if I had taken my major a little bit more seriously and recognized the opportunities for building connections professionally, that I might have gotten where I am right now a little bit faster. Um, just as a general rule in life, build all the bridges and all the connections you can and take advantage of every opportunity in your field. If your major is offering you a, a special talk or putting out a podcast, like I really encourage you to jump on that and listen to it. Take advantage of every door that gets open to you. So maintaining focus on my major, um, I went to a very unique, very strict school. They did require class attendance and I cared a lot about grades. Um, I am a very motivated person when put in a structured environment. So I was able to do very well in my major up to the point of requirements. But as I touched on, I could have, I could have done better with just personal focus. Now, what have I been doing since then besides having children, which is very distracting to a creative career? I would build a little momentum and then have another baby and, you know, um, go through the newborn phase and everything since then. Um, but I've, I've made, I've made a pretty significant mistake along the way that I want to share with you guys and see if maybe I can steer you away from. And then I've also found a way to continue to pursue my passion as a very, um, as a person with a lot of responsibility. Um, the truth is as adults, everyone has responsibility and maybe my little tips can show you how to push through and continue to pursue no matter what you're facing in your day. Um, the mistake I made, I didn't maybe clarify enough to myself, what do I want to say to the world? What voice do I have? What do I want to put out there with my art? And I would get really distracted because I have a hard time saying no to people asking me questions like, would you do this project for me? Would you paint this for my grandfather? Would you paint this mural in my kid's nursery. Um, I did a lot of artwork that wasn't my vision for what I wanted to go out in the world. On top of that, I was never very courageous with pricing, so I wouldn't get paid adequately. Um, when you have someone asking you to do a commission that you don't want to do, it really distracts you from the work you do want to do. And then you just don't get in the studio time and you avoid all work. And it ends up being a point of just feeling really discouraged about it and distracted. Um, I would just encourage you, if you are pursuing a creative field, writer, artist, anything, musician, think about that. Like what mark do you, what gift do you have to give the world? What perspective, your voice is unique and you do have something to contribute and don't get distracted by all the little things. And you think, I thought, well, I'm, I'm making money, I'm doing my art, but it really wasn't the art I needed to do. So learn to say no, and you don't have to actually say N-O. You can say, I don't have time. You can say, come up with a creative excuse, something that you're comfortable with, that you don't feel like will disappoint them too much or break the friendship or whatever you're nervous with doing. Now, how to work as a mom, and this can apply to probably a lot of people's life, but I do have some tips to share. Um, right, you saw my studio. Uh, this is great. I have gorgeous light in here. I am blessed to have this space. I've got storage in the basement, but it has not always been that way. We used to live in a tiny, tiny little cabin 
we used to rent our friend's basement for three years. My first nursery was half kitchen, half baby. The crib was just in there with the stove. Um, when we lived in the basement apartment, I just set up my drawing table, same one right here, in the entryway. And when we lived in the cabin, when you walked in, <laughs> there was my art stuff. Thankfully, my husband has never minded the mess. And it's really important have a workspace because here is tip number one that I would tell everyone, leave your stuff out. Do not put away your project every time. If you've just put up a massive barrier between you and getting some work done, getting that studio time in. Um, my kids leave my paint alone. I have had very few incidents. No one has drunk any paint thinner. And I work in oil paint. They're very messy. And, but they have grown up around it and they mostly just leave it alone. So leave your stuff out as much as you're able to. And then don't feel like you have to have all your chores done or a perfectly neat space to be creative. Yes, the ideal would be calm, clean, the perfect time of day, the perfect mood. Any of you who are in a creative field may have already discovered you don't get the luxury of working only under inspiration. You just have to sit down and you have to put in the hours and you have to work. And if you are so distracted by mess that you can't focus, consider just cleaning your desk, which this desk is not even clean. Or consider tidying just the room you're in. Maybe set yourself a limit. Say, okay, I'm going to tidy up for 20 minutes and then it's studio time and nothing is going to drag me away. Also, this is very key as a mom is work with interruptions. As a mom, you have to work with interruptions. There's going to be the diaper change. There's going to be 572 fights to settle in an hour studio time. Um... I work in a space because I am trying to be dedicated at my craft. I work in a space where the kids flow all around me. They're in, they're out. I don't want to shut them out. Yes, I dream of the day when I get focused time. My children are quite young and I don't have a sitter right now. Um, maybe that's something I'll do in the future. And so I need to be accessible to them. And I just work through it. And it's not always pretty. And you know what? Work always isn't pretty. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have a good 20 minutes. You're going to have a really bad 20 minutes. Um, but just push through. And then the great secret, do the work. You'll hear this. You'll keep hearing this. And it's so true. Do the work. Um, trick yourself if you have to. Uh, put on a Netflix show that you want to binge in the background. Um, podcasts or podcasts and audiobooks, just that's what's keeping me going. Splurge, get some AirPods if you don't already, they're magical. And just whatever gets you in that chair. Um, I have a couple art podcasts that I'm enjoying, and you know what? Maybe one of them is an hour, and you can say, I'm just gonna paint, I'm gonna paint through the podcast, and maybe you'll keep going, maybe you won't. Um, but that can be a very helpful trip trick for just keeping you in the chair. So where I am right now, done all the bad commissions, I've done some street fairs, which have worked, which are a wonderful way. I'm a huge extrovert. Street fairs are a lot of work. You have to keep your price point pretty low, but it is an area, if you work in prints at all, it is an area that you can get out and you can watch the public interact with your work. Everyone says nice things. It's, it's a huge um, little confidence builder. It can also be discouraging based on sales. So maybe don't recognize that art markets, you know, street fairs aren't your ideal art market. I'll like get to in a second. But street fairs are something... Um, I've had an Etsy shop for a long time now. I struggle with dedication in the Etsy shop. Um, so, you know, look up the resources out there if you're thinking of that sort of thing. They can help you. How to take pictures. Um, 
you know, how often to post on Instagram. Obviously, Instagram is an awesome resource, free, free advertising for artists. Um, but another thing I would say to do is keep asking. I went to this little makers conference and they did teach us about pitching ourselves. And the truth is you're going to hear no's. I have, there's an, I come from a pretty cool little hometown that has a good art scene. And there's this very awesome craft fair once a year. And I have wanted to be part of it. It's a really cool thing to be part of. And I've been turned down four times, I think. Never have gotten in. Um, don't let those no's keep you from keeping pursuing. Um, so quite recently, I went from a mom with an Etsy shop to I had this goal in mind. I set myself a little marker. I made myself focus, stop painting all the different themes. I was passionate about the sea bather collection. So I really settled in to focus on it. And I said, hey, when I have this many pieces, I'm going to find a place to show my work. I wasn't selling the originals. I was holding on to them. I said, I want to, um, I want to show my work. And I had a gallery in mind, again, from my hometown. And um, I was following it on Instagram. I'd been to the gallery. and. I wrote them. They said on their website, hey, we're at capacity, but write us. And we're always keeping artists on file. Anyways, long story short, I just cold called them, reached out to them, and they loved my work. And I've been with them just a very short amount of time. The work is selling very well um, beyond what I've expected it to. And it has really changed my world because now I have a wonderful turnaround time. I create, I produce, and, and I sell. And that is the goal if you're trying to do this professionally. And also, not only am I selling, but I'm selling in a place that I'm really excited to be a part of. So I reached out and I asked and I got a yes. And the no's are so demoralizing. And you know what? All your little friends' compliments on Instagram, it puts a little bit of wind in your sails. And when the no's come, just keep sailing because another compliment's going to come and speed you up a little bit. And then when you get something that really is affirming, it gives you so much confidence to then say, hey, yes, I have something to offer the world because there is always more space in the world for creativity and you are individual and your creativity is a little bit different than everybody else's. So sit in your chair, do the work, believe in what you have to say, and just put it out there.